Warning, this story contains artistic depictions of sexual conduct. All characters in the story are over the age of 18. Any similarities to real people, living or dead, are purely coincidental. Coincidental. <laughs> Coincidental. Yeah. Safe to say that there's going to be some things I'll have to cut out or censor. That being said, welcome to Sweetest Monster. God, it still sounds pretty damn loud. And again, welcome to Sweetest Monster. <laughs> Story about a middle-aged guy who runs across the cat girl. At first, things seem kind of nice, but apparently it's supposed to take some kind of a twisted turn. I don't know what to think about that. I don't know if it's like that Keanu Reeves movie with the two girls, but... Hey, we're going to dive in. Obviously, we're going to see where this goes. <laughs> I remember when great aunt Clarice was still alive. She had a black cat named Belle. Let's see where I can put my mouse. Now that it is now that isn't strictly true. Great aunt Clarice didn't just have one cat over her long life. She had several. Maybe it's because she never had any children. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist and diagnosing somebody after the death seems rather callous of me. Great Aunt Clarice always loved cats. After the death of Great Uncle Albert, however, she began to dote on them more and more. She would sit them in her lap and talk to them, and she looked at them so intensely you would have thought she was waiting for a reply. It was kind of sad. Now that I think about it, I didn't find it sad when I was little, though. I thought it was scary. I never liked going to see a Great Aunt Clarice. She would sit in her armchair, bent double back hunched over like an epiphanous bell ringer from the Victor Hugo's famous novel, stroking her cats with her withered, ropey hands. I guess she was our typical crazy cat lady. At her lowest point, she had six of the things, shedding hair around the house and dragging dead birds across the welcome mat in the kitchen. I don't remember much about her cats. I mean, they're just cats. You've seen one cat, you've seen them all, right? But Belle was different. I remember Belle. Belle was a black cat, proud and stately, her eyes greener than anything I had ever seen before. She disliked people in general and would hiss and spit whenever unwanted fingers strayed too near her glossy coat. She hissed at me, at mother, at father, and she definitely hissed at great Aunt Clarice. When she was truly enraged, Belle would even try to scratch us. Sounds like a typical cat. I can still remember how it felt when Belle's claws raked across the back of my hands. I can still remember the ugly red welts she caused. She drew blood on more than one occasion. Sounds like it's a Russian blue cat. Mother and father were upset, but great aunt Clarice simply tutted and said, Well, what can you do? <laughs> Damn. My parents, as may be expected, were not very happy about this laissez fair response. I don't even know if I pronounced that right. As a result, they stopped visiting her for several weeks. They couldn't hold out for long, though. My mother probably felt guilty for storming out of her house like that, even though the welfare of her only son was at stake. But not really. I mean, I'm still alive and kicking, which is more than I can say for great Aunt Clarice. Damn. Belle's violent assaults didn't leave any lasting scars. Well, not physically. Mentally, I'm also doing fine. Though I did become a primary school teacher, so you might think otherwise. But those scratches were hardly the worst thing Belle did to me. What the hell? I remember, I was playing with a model aeroplane. It wasn't anything special, certainly not electronic. All I could do was throw it, like a glorified frisbee, but I enjoyed it all the same. I was running through great Cla Aunt Clarice's overgrown jungle of a back garden, all uncut grass that reached past the ankles and old dead apple trees that hadn't given any apples for years and years when I noticed it. Th 
great Aunt Clarice's garden is rather big. Well, was big, I should say, because the garden doesn't belong to her anymore. It had apple trees, like I said, but it also had a vegetable garden. I disused the pen where great uncle Albert used to keep chickens. And a lake. A rather large lake lined with willow trees, like something from a picture book. These people were rich. Like the lake in the beginning of Alice in Wonderland. Maybe I was channeling Alice myself that day, although I, t I didn't tumble into Wonderland searching for white rabbits. Instead, I, quite foolishly looking back on it, fell for it first into the lake whilst trying to save the life of a black cat. I heard a yowl and a loud splash. I turned, my plane forgotten. It landed on the ground and bounced a couple times, but I hardly noticed. I was too busy staring out at the lake. Staring at Belle. The old saying states cats have nine lives, but I wasn't naive enough to believe that, even at the age of six. I had already been to Great Uncle Albert's funeral, so I knew where people that people when people died, they stayed in the ground and they didn't get back up again. Belle did not have nine lives. She only had one life, and it was precious. Belle had scratched me only a few months prior, and I didn't particularly like her, but I didn't want her to drown. That was when I decided to rescue her. I meant well. As it soon transpired, this was an incredibly stupid idea for several reasons. For one thing, I couldn't swim. Oh, damn. Okay, well, the thought. But for another, Bell could. Ooh. Damn. I can't really remember what happened after that. This is where my memory goes foggy. All I have to rely on is hearsay from my parents and reports from doctors. They told me I almost drowned. I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel or anything, or if I did, I don't remember it. But there was something I do remember from that ordeal, splashing helplessly in the icy cold lake in Aunt Clarice's garden. I remember watching, slowly drowning, as Belle pulled herself out of the lake right before my eyes, rendering my rescue attempt null and void. Damn. <sighs> now, I'm guessing, but I imagine the last thought I had right before I swallowed in a mouthful of fetid water and lost consciousness was... You really are an idiot. Yes. Yes, you are, Nay. More than 30 years later, I didn't think I've changed all that much. Just ask my wife, Sally. May 11th, Tuesday. Sally doesn't like Arabella Waite, and I can't say I blame her. I don't think I like Arabella Waite all that much either. Is this a cat or what? That being said, it's strangely strange Sally seems to be laboring under the entirely misguided apprehension that I might be having an affair with her. <laughs> oh, damn. Why are you always so kind to that awful woman, Robin? I can't stand her. The two of us are sitting together in the living room, the curtains drawn, the TV buzzing in the background like a particularly lackadaisical swarm of bees. I'm not sure what we're supposed to be watching because I haven't been paying any attention. I think it's some kind of a crime drama. That would explain the stiff, lifeless course of a teenage girl sprawled across the TV screen, her hair wringing wet. Crime dramas have a strange fixation with dead girls, particularly drowned dead girls. Maybe they think it's edgy. Maybe they think it's sexy. The pre... Raphaelites sure seem to think so, given their unhealthy obsession with poor Ophelia. I can't really comment on the sexiness, or otherwise, of this dead girl. She reminds me too much of Melly. Who the hell is Melly? I know you can't stand her, Sal, but her money is worth just as much as anybody else's. Every little, every, every little counts in all that, okay? Regurgitate advertising jingles at me, Robin. <laughs> Even if they're catchy? Even so. 
I don't think Sally's were watching the TV either. She's glaring at the wall, squeezing her cushion so tightly it would scream if it could. <laughs> Why did she have to come and pick Annette up so early? She knows her piano lessons don't finish until half six. Maybe she's lonely. So she decides to invade our home and invite herself for coffee. Well, I guess I was the one who invited her for the, in for the coffee, but I don't really, really have a choice. You could have told her to leave. I couldn't, Sal. Not when she's come all this way. I'd have felt bad. Oh, no. So you feel bad about inconveniencing Arabella sodding weight, but you don't have any sympathy for me? I had to listen to her banging on her banging on about her divorce for a half an hour. I felt like I was going to go mad. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Sally Pally. I try to give Sally a sympathetic look, but I'm not sure how much of an effect it's having. Sally isn't even looking at me. She's too busy seething. Quite the relationship. If you really were sorry, you wouldn't have dumped her on me like that. I'm a translator, not a professional entertainer. Ooh. I know. I'm sorry about that, Sal. I really am. I just... I don't know what to do. I could hardly cut Annette's piano lesson short because her mother turned up too early. I bet she did it on purpose. It's because you're always so nice to her, Robin. You're too soft. I don't like the way Sally says nice. It sounds ac ac accusatory. Like she's trying to frame me for a crime I haven't committed. It is true that Annabelle Waite is fairly attractive as far as single mothers go, but she is also, unarguably, Arabella Waite. Arabella Waite's daughter, Annette, is a student at the school I work for. She's been having piano lessons with me for two years. My relationship with the charming Madame Waite, however, is strictly one of business. I hardly ever talk to her. Well, Annabella Waite tries to talk to me. I go along with it because the more polite than ignoring her, as Sally would prefer, but I don't really try to encourage conversation. Why would I? If I'm being brutally honest, I think Arabella Waite is something of a snob, and she's boring with it. I don't know why she gave her daughter such a French name, fancy French name. Arabella Waite doesn't have to have a single French bone in her body. Though so Arabella Waits getting divorced, she's in the process of getting divorced for more than seven months now. Oh, damn. I feel sorry for Annette than her. I think Annette's the kind of nine-year-old girl who's been forced to grow up too fast, too quickly. She's less of a daughter to her mother than the constant live-in counselor. No wonder she's always so quiet during our piano lessons. I have to be nice to her, Sal. She's paying customer, and she's going through a tough time. Whoops. Well, at least I know what the right mouse click does now. Every single vir visual novel seems to do this. Apologies. I know she's going through a tough time. I know all about that, Robin, because she told me in detail. She told me more than I would like to know. <laughs> well, Sally sniffs. If the way she looks at you is anything to go by, I have no doubt as to why her last husband packed her ba his bags. You're being a tad judgmental, don't you think? I'm not being judgmental, I'm just saying it like it is. She's always been far too friendly with you. Perhaps it's, but it's not like I return her feelings, whatever they might be. I just want to help Annette pass her grade 4 piano exam. And that's why you went out for coffee with Arabella last week, is it? Because you wanted to help Annette? Damn. I sigh heavily. So we're back to this again, are we? I thought we'd exhausted this topic last night. We certainly went over it enough times. I hate the women at the I hate the women at the ridiculous keep fit club Sally goes to. I swear they don't even try to lose weight. From what I've gathered, they meet up every Monday solely to so they can gossip. Miss Harris is the worst. I knew I was in hot water the moment I saw her in Costa last Saturday, trying to console a crying Arabelle wait over my cappuccino. I already told you, Sal, I don't want to go for a coffee with her. We just bumped into each other and she suggested it, that's all. But you didn't need to agree with her. 
No, I didn't, but I think she needs somebody to talk to. The divorce must be pretty bad. She started crying, Sal. And I guess she needed a strong, handsome, already married, let me add, knight, to sweep her off her feet. Come off it. What was I supposed to do? My heart isn't made of steel. But what about me, Robin? How do you think that made me feel? I wasn't thinking about you at the time, to be honest. I was more concerned about Aravel weight smearing her mascara, which was definitely not waterproof. No matter what she said. And it went down the front of my shirt. So you're telling me you gave her a hug, too? Shit. I didn't mean to let that one slip. I'm such a smooth talker. Well, I, I think she may have hugged me first, and it wasn't a hug, not really. She was just trying to hide her face. Like I said, she was crying so much her makeup had started to run. Being hugged like her was being embraced by a depressed clown. And it was an interesting experience, but one that I'm not easily keen to repeat anytime soon. Jesus Christ, I can't believe it. First you invite her for a coffee, and now you're telling me you've been letting her cry in her chest out in public? Why did she have to emphasize the out in public part? Isn't it better than embracing her in private? I don't understand women. Look, Sal, I know it sounds kind of bad, but it really wasn't like that. I'm not interested in her. Really, I'm not, even though she does wear all those low-cut shirts. That isn't the part that upsets me the most, though, Robin. That's not the real issue here. Damn, Sally sounds mad enough as it is, and it isn't the real issue. I dread to think what it might be. I'm disappointed in you. You said you were going out with me and Sally last Saturday. You promised. Oh, of course, Melly. I knew I was forgetting something. It's a good thing that something is my only daughter. Only daughter. Look, I, I know I said, and I really did mean it. I just got distracted. That's all. Too busy trying to console poor, Ella, console poor Arabella, were we? That isn't it, Sally. I just, I, I didn't know what to do. It wasn't only last week either. You've been promising Millie you've had a day out with her for almost a month, and you still haven't. Just that is so pressing. What, just what is so pressing that you can't put one measly day aside for your daughter. Damn. Robin, you messing up, bruv. I know it's shoddy behavior. I am sorry. I've just been really busy. Busy? How busy can you be? You're a music teacher in a primary school. It's hardly rocket science. It's not science at all. It's not even a proper subject. Oh, now Sally's done it. I love her and all. I kind of have since she's my wife, but I'm tired of hearing this crap about my job day in and day out. Even Arabella's bleeding weight even Arabella bleeding, bleeding weight I was on my case about it on Saturday in Costa, in between all her tears. Oh, I envy you, Robin, working at a primary school and doing music too. It must be so relaxing making a living out of something you're passionate about. <laughs> got, the, got the sound for her going here. Toiling away in an office all these years has really started to grind me down. I guess you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? <laughs> Sounding familiar. Yeah, right, because trying to stop a class of five year olds hitting each other over the heads with their recorders is so much fun. I'm living the dream here, folks. For your information, Sally, music is a proper subject, and my job is a proper job. It is more proper than yours. At least I actually leave the house. Ho oh, ho. He's about to get his ass handed to him. Sally stares at me, her face a pale death mask. Oh, you just said the wrong thing, bruv. What was that, Robin? What did you just say? I know I've gone too far, but I can't back down now. It's already too late. In for a penny, in for a pound. You're about to get pounded and then some, boy. <laughs> I said my job is more proper than yours. Unlike you, I can sit at my backside all day with the TV on. I can't sit on my backside all day with the TV in the background. Oh, shots fired. 
How dare you say that to me? Just because I work from home, it doesn't mean my job is any less real than yours. Besides, music is nothing more than a hobby. It's not important, not in the grand scheme of things. Music is necessary, no matter what you say. Being able to play an instrument is an important life skill. <laughs> they are full on arguing as a couple now. Damn. And that's why you stopped trying to teach Mel, is it? Because it's such an important life skill? I stopped for Melly's sake. She hated it. I just don't think the piano is for her, and I have other students to teach, so... So you'll teach them, but not Melly? Not our daughter? I wonder why. I'm sure money has nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Sally. Don't you Sally me. You're in the wrong, and you know it. That's why you've gone quiet. It's because you know you've done something you should feel guilty about. That's it, Robin. Own it. Sally looks at me with the undisguised, undisguised disgust. She might as well be examining a cockroach. I feel just as welcome. I'm going to sleep. Don't even think about coming into my bedroom tonight. I don't want to see your face. Ooh. The couch for you. My bedroom? What's with that possessive? I did pay for half the house. Nice selective memory there, Sal. Oh, yikes. With that, Sally storms up the stairs, her messy bun bouncing. <laughs> there you go. Bye, Sal. I watch as she ascends, slamming one foot after the other with more force than necessary. I can't see her face, but the posture makes her feeling more evident. Don't follow me. If you do, you're dead. Yeah, that's pretty much the sentiment. I sigh, rubbing the back of my neck with one hand. Don't worry about that, Sal. I wasn't planning on following you. I might have almost drowned when I was a kid, but I'm not suicidal. <laughs> There's a river a short walk away from my house. Oh, sorry, not my house. Mine and Sally's. It would be a little hypocritical of me to call Sally out for laying single-handed claim to our bedroom and then do the same thing about her home, <laughs> wouldn't it? Let me try that again. There's a river a short walk away from our house, maybe 10, 15 minutes. The river isn't pretty, pretty by any stretch of the imagination, hardly something to wax poetic over. Even the greatest of romantics would struggle to say something nice about it. The river is dark brown, choked with mud and dirt, and people use it as a kind of a communal dustbin, ignoring the real bins that exist for the very purpose. It's usually filled with broken beer bottles, carrier bags from nearby supermarkets, and fast food containers. It's not a pleasant sight. Ooh, that, that, that river has definitely seen better days. Once I saw a sofa soaking in there, unmoved by the torrents of muddy water that rushed at it. Oh, damn. It's a proverbial dumping ground for the city, apparently. It isn't rare to see shopping trolleys basking in the murky depths, shallows more like, their motionless wheels aloft in the air. Part of me can kind of relate to what the, the Robin's saying. Uh, I've seen a few of those in my time in some of the rivers where I grew up. I'm guessing these probably it's probably like a Midwestern town. I don't even envy the guys who have to dredge all that shit back out of the river. It must be a rotten job, far worse than mine. Most people, my wife included, look vaguely amused when I, t and I tell them I teach music in a primary school. Oh, so you play with trambourines and castanets all day? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying on that one. I don't know that instrument, so I can't pronounce it properly. But being, at least being a teacher is a respectable job. Some more respectable is proper. Not like Lake Dredgers or whatever their official name is. Do they even have an official name? See, this guy, he thinks he's above and beyond what normal people do. I fancy Robin and Sal as the kind of people that would sit there and point at a garbage man and say, Hey, if you don't ever go to school and study, you'll end up becoming like him. When in reality... Uh, those people uh, who do pick up trash and all that stuff make probably a lot better money than people with who have educations and jobs from an official degree. Not always true, but the majority of it is. 
At any rate, though this river is hardly a picturesque point of local interest, more like an eyesore, everybody says, I still like it. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the sound of the rushing water. It's strange that this river is so... It's strange that I like this river so much, since I almost drowned in my youth, but that's never really bothered me. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So as I always do when I'm feeling unsettled, which has been more and more frequently as of late, I find myself standing on that bridge, overlooking the surface of the river. It's a dark night, and water doesn't look brown, as it usually does. It's black, like ink, the skeletal of a shopping trolley sticking out of its muddy banks. There would be a shopping trolley. There always is. I suppose it's comforting in a way. Some things never change. Not like my relationship with Sally that's changed a hell of a lot. It happened so gradually, too, I didn't even realize how much it had deteriorated until... Until what? I don't want to say until it was too late, because that sounds horribly maudlin, but... I sigh, resting my hands against the wrought iron railings. The iron is cold, chilled by the biting wind, and my my fingers spasm. If I stay here too long, I'm going to catch a cold. I know that, but I can't bring myself to move. I continue to stand there, frozen, staring at the river. The water parts when it hits the shopping trolley, swirling about it in circles. Ah, did I just feel a spot of moisture on my head? It's starting to rain. The rain starts to fall from the sky in a fine mist, light and ephemeral. Well, not that ephemeral, but I'm still getting wet. I should go. I've dallied here long enough, lost to my self-indulgent thoughts. Sally might be getting worried. (laughs) Sally ain't worried about you, bruv. Then again, maybe not. I wonder. If I slipped and fell over the guardrail, would Sally mind? Oh, he's having those thoughts. Don't do it, bruv. Would Melly? Maybe Arabella would, but I don't care what she thinks. Sally's right. I haven't been spending enough time with Melly. I only ever see her at dinner when we sit together at the table, lost inside our own respective silences. Happy families. She doesn't talk to me, doesn't even look at me. I'm not sure why I call her Melody. It's a big name to live up to with a lot of unspoken hopes and dreams mixed in. That was my first mistake. I turn, ready to set... Nah, see, I'm I, I'm I'm having problems because it's like my my verbal uh, verbiage is thrown off because it's like I turn ready to set make my way 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 back home. It's an English error. I turn ready to make my way my weary way back home when. Guess who? Ah. My vision is suddenly obscured by a darkness even darker than that of the night sky. Breath glides across my ear and laughter, obviously female, dances about me. There's something pressed against my back, hands held over my eyes. They're doing that childish game you see kids participate in the background. I never thought I'd be on the receiving end of such a game. For what they're saying is, uh... It's like in those animes where the girl comes up behind the guy and goes, Kyo wa da re da. Where it's like, you know, who do you think this is behind you right now? That's what this is. Who is it? How many young girls do I even know? Maybe it's one of my students. Miss Cartwright's Enid, perhaps? But Enid would never do something like this. She's far too shy. Not as shy as Melody, but shy enough. What about my other students, then? Laura? Jessica? Cornelia? No, 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 no. Laura is quite the chatterbox, but she'd never be this informal with me. Jessica... She spends most of her time on piano lessons, staring up at the ceiling. Cornelia's family is from Poland, and though she's fluent in English, she's quite a strong accent. Accident. Accent. It isn't any of those girls. Why would it be? I'm not that close to any of my students. Who else could it be, then? I think you've got the wrong person. Can you let go of me, please? I expect, I expect a sudden intake of breath, a fanic step backwards, and a wild-eyed apology. But it never comes. The girl only giggles. Her hands remain stubbornly in place, unmoved. 
Uh, oh no, I definitely don't. I know it's you. I know it was you even in my if my eyes are pecked out by crows. Crows? If we really do know each other, could you at least let me see your face so I can confirm it? But that's no fun. I wanted you to guess. I've always been bad at guessing games. Hmm. <laughs> Suit yourself then. But that's so boring. The girl steps back, drawing her hands away from my eyes. 